Today on Barfly, Halloween special, we'll be tracing the history of the zombie cocktail. Oh. My name is Leandro Demon Riva. This is the Educated Barfly. I guess this is the week where I try my hand at creating a zombie based rum old fashioned. Let's get into making the cocktails. For today's special Halloween episode, I thought it would be kind of fun to go through the history of the zombie cocktail and do them kind of chronologically. The thing is, is that there are seven zombie cocktails to do. So we're just going to do the first three from the original 1934 zombie through 1945. For those of you that don't know, the zombie is a cocktail that was created by a guy named Ernest B Raymond Beaumont Gant, popularly known as Don the Beachcomber. In the 1930s, he created a Hollywood Boulevard bar called on the Beachcomber. I think it's actually pretty close to where Lano, which is a modern day tiki bar, is on Hollywood Boulevard and very close to my house. I'm very sad that there's no Don the Beachcomber anymore. The original was created in 1934 and the legend of the story goes that uh, this business guy walks into his bar and asks for a strong drink because now the history is split here. Either he has a long meeting he has to get through or he's got to catch a flight and he just wanted something to sort of tide him over. Either one of those are actually pretty realistic because sometimes when I'm on a plane, I kind of want to have a little nip of something if I'm going to be there for a long time. Right, but not going um, into a meeting. Going into a big business meeting? Well, maybe he's Front just like side. over his job. He's an ad exec. He's bored, you know, whatever. But anyways, I've heard it be a meeting before and I've heard it be a long flight as well. So according to legend, Don the Beachcomber mixed him this drink on the spot. He added a ton of alcohol in it to make it really strong and then just kind of covered up with fruit juices and the zombie was born. Uh, the guy went away, he went to his meeting or caught his flight or whatever. And then a couple of days later, he comes back and he asks Don, what was in that drink? I was a zombie for three days afterward. And the legend of the zombie was kind of created. After that, it kind of spread by word of mouth and people from all over the country started coming to get a zombie. And then as you guys know, that is history because we are now here many, 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 many years later, still doing this cocktail. So the recipe was lost for many, many years until it was unearthed by uh, Jeff Beach Bumberry, who is a very well-known tiki historian. He found it in the notebook uh, of a guy named Dick Santiago, which was a former waiter at Don the Beachcombers and had the recipe written down. And so now we have it. All right, that was a mouthful and kind of long. So let's get into making the cocktail. We're gonna do one dash of Angostura bitters, six drops of absinthe, top wouldn't go on. Weird. All right, now we're going to grab out our fruit. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Half an ounce of Don's Mix. Now Don's Mix is just a two to one mixture of grapefruit juice and cinnamon syrup. The thing is, is that if you want to make the original, which we are doing today, you want to use white grapefruit juice as opposed to ruby red. I will say though, after making a lot of these drinks with Don's mix. I actually prefer using ruby red grapefruit juice for my own version, but that's just that's just me. All right, so we're gonna do half an ounce of Don's mix, one teaspoon of grenadine, half an ounce of velvet falernum, or your own falernum, falernum if you make it. There's a lot of craft falernum out there, so go crazy. All right, here's where we get into the fun stuff. We're doing one ounce of 151 Demerara rum, an ounce and a half of gold Jamaican rum, an ounce and a half of gold Puerto Rican rum. I'm gonna get a Collins glass. Let's do a little. 15 seconds on high. Is that about 15 seconds? Oh, uh, no, I think that was less. That was like three seconds. That was five seconds. Mm -hmm. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. All right. I think your Mississippis are a little fast, but roughly. I mean, this is very voluminous. I actually might need a bigger glass, dude. I think we're going to need to break out the big guns with this guy. All right. I guess, sir, we're committing to this. That's pretty good volume there, actually. You need to make sure that you have enough room for your ice. And you do. There we go. That's good. Little slappy poo, crushy pants, like so. I don't know when maraschino cherries were developed, but I kind of feel like this cocktail needs these ones. All right, let's, let's take a sip. Man, that packs a punch. Whoa. You definitely feel that 151. I'll tell you that. 
For someone who threw a bunch of rums into fruit juice on the fly, it's actually pretty balanced. The thing is, is that you get a lot of that like alcoholic bitter 151 flavor and this thing will knock you out. So you gotta be really careful when you drink it. It's nice though, you get a good, you know, kind of grenadine flavor that gives it that savory sweetness. Uh, the falernum kind of adds a little bit of body and sweetness in there too. What I like about it is that it's not relying f solely on simple syrup. There's just a little bit of simple syrup inside the Don's mix. It's nice and tart. I can even feel a little bit of that grapefruit in there. It's, it's good, it's nicely balanced. So there it is guys, the 1934 zombie. The next zombie we're doing is called a hot zombie. So first thing we're gonna do is preheat our glass. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're using a tempered glass so you don't shatter it. It's just always a good idea to do that. Uh, but just like we chill glasses, we also heat glasses. It was created in 1941 by the Ron Rico Rum Company, which is a Puerto Rican rum company. Then we take our preheated glass, we dump out the ingredients. No, I did not dump it on the floor. And then we're gonna do one teaspoon of brown sugar. And then we're just gonna add a little bit of hot water. I'm gonna dissolve that brown sugar. We're gonna do half an ounce of passion fruit syrup, one ounce of pineapple juice, half an ounce of lime juice, and last but certainly not least, two ounces of gold Puerto Rican rum. And we're going to add in about four ounces of hot water. Give it a little bit of a stir. And then the last thing we're gonna do, a little pat of butter on top, like so. And now what some people like to do as well, and this isn't part of the original recipe, but I think it's good. This is 151 Don Q. We're just gonna do a little bar spoon, and just float it on top like so. Now, the flame is invisible because it's alcohol flame. See it. You can see it right there, right? and just do that until the butter melts. This is basically like a zombie-fied hot butter rum is what we're doing. And then when we're ready to drink it, we just extinguish the flame. Make sure it's extinguished. Oh man, that works so well. That's so good. And you know what's funny is that the recipe is wholly different from a zombie and yet still evokes the same zombie kind of flavor of the original, which is really nice, but there's no passion fruit in the original. There's no grenadine in this. There's no uh, absinthe in this. It's, it's kind of different yet the same, and it works really well. This is a really nice, this might replace my just regular hot butter rum, or actually just make it into rotation. You get the butter right on top as well because it's not very fatty and it's not gonna mix with the water. It's really, really nice. Sure, a little lemon garnish or lemon. Hmm. Lemon would be nice. Yeah, a little, maybe a little lemon spritz on top or something. Ooh, you know what you could do? I mean, can we just try something, Marius, real quick? You know what you could do? Oh man, and I don't know how I didn't think of this. So let's just like float that on top. Am I inventing a new zombie? Into the flame peel? Garnish. Yeah, and do a little flame peel. There you go. even though it's lime really, but lime doesn't zest enough. Ooh, very hot. Ooh, a little added extra zest there. That's really nice. Oh, that's nice. That's nice, guys. I like that. Mm, yes, it's right here. So there it is, the 1941 Hot Zombie. So for our last zombie variation, we're gonna be doing the version from the Tonga Room circa 1945. The Tonga Room is a tiki, bar restaurant in San Francisco that is still around and it features an artificial tropical rainstorm every 20 minutes, which is definitely somewhere we, we need to go. All right, first things first, we're gonna do one ounce of lime juice into our tin, one ounce of passion fruit syrup. Whoa, I almost dropped that while putting the cap on, man. That would have been a sticky situation. Half an ounce of pineapple juice. Half an ounce of Don Q 151. Be very careful with this stuff. It's flammable. Half an ounce of dark Jamaican rum. One ounce of light rum. We're using our Havana Club, which we are gonna have to re-up on Havana Club, man, because we're running out. Mm -hmm. That's another thing that COVID has really been very bad for, is international travel so that we could re-up on our Cuban rum. 
little skosh pebble in there. Give it the old whip shaker. I like to shake really hard when I have pineapple so I can get that nice aeration because it, it just aerates so well. Grab our Collins glass, add in our zombie. Add in the rest of our pebble. Slappy poo, I didn't do the crushy pants though. Just gonna do the same kind of garnish as before. I mean, you should put cherries, but I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna. It's not too strong, it's not too sweet. It's nice and tart. Uh, then you're also obviously getting a little bit of sugar from the pineapple, which is, you can feel that in there as well. I think honestly that the white rum is going to be getting lost in here. And what we're really picking up on is that dark Jamaican rum and also the 151, the, the Puerto Rican 151. Uh, it's got a really nice balance to it. This is a cocktail after my own heart. So there it is, guys. The Tonga Room Zombie, circa 1945. All right, I think that's what we got for our kind of zombies, Marius, their zombie episode. I kind of had visions of this like being tied into, like my guilty pleasure is, is zombie movies. I really like zombie movies. My guilty pleasure is zombie drinks. I like zombie movies the way people like Star Wars. I just, I don't know what it is about flesh eating zombie zombies movie? that make me happy, but they just do. What's your favorite zombie movie? Ooh, I'm probably, I would probably have to say that uh, Day of the Dead the George A. Romero. There's a 1996 version of Night of the Living Dead, which is pretty good as well. The original Night of the Living Dead is, you know, it's 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 good, but it's like kind of tame considering what we uh, what we uh, we do these days. But there's also another show on Netflix called Black Summer, which is really, really good zombie. And that's like fast moving zombies, obviously 28 days later, another really, really good one as well for like modern day zombies. All right, I'm gonna go drink my zombie alone watching a zombie movie. But before I do that, I wanna say thank you to our YouTube members and patrons for helping to make this channel uh, a fantastic success. And I wanna say, go check out theeducatedbarfly.com where you can find articles and merch and our virtual bottle program. And uh, I think that's all we got for you these days. So I'm just gonna say Leandro out. See you later. Oh, have a very safe, and fun Halloween. Be safe.